Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's me, it's Mr. V. And welcome to another visit. I am, I feel like I'm yelling at the camera. I'm right across the street here from Hollywood High School. This is a reflection. I'm at the corner of Selma and Highland. And there's quite a story to actually, uh, to some of the street names around here in Hollywood. And we'll get to that later. But here comes some traffic. Let's take a look at Hollywood High School and start walking. Sorry for the traffic noise. You might uh, recognize some of the famous faces, familiar faces from Hollywood High School's graduate roster. The front of this building has looked quite different throughout the years. But our destination today is not Hollywood High School. Our destination is the El Capitan. The actual theater comes out the back side here and you can see the large structure there which shows the roots of the building as a live theater. It was originally opened in 1926 for live or legitimate performances and I'm gonna give you some facts here in a little bit but this uh, section here at the back this section here at the back of the theater would have been where all of the theater rigging curtains and so on would have hung back in the day when they did live theater here Now, as you can see, there's not a whole lot of detail on the back of the building because the front of the building faces Hollywood Boulevard, and we're going to be out there in a minute, but... I thought you might like to see this building from a perspective that you don't normally get to see. The front of the building facing Hollywood Boulevard has a lot more beautiful detail on it, but it's been here since 1926, and it was built, uh, paid for, by property tycoon Charles Edward Toberman, C.E. Toberman. Toberman hired Morgan Walls and Clements to design the exterior of the building. But I want to look for some details here in the exterior where apparently they have some Shakespearean characters up top here? I don't know. Let's let's take a look. We're gonna go around the block the long way though, and we're gonna take a look at it from the other direction. 
Desiree and I took a walk a few weeks ago down Hollywood Boulevard because I was curious to see how many actual movie theaters were there on Hollywood Boulevard. I've lived here for a little over a year and I've visited here my whole life, but you know, Hollywood's known for movies, so how many movie theaters are actually here? Well, it turns out there's about 10 of them. Uh, the El Capitan is not the oldest. If you want to see some of that footage, please take a look at my other video. I'll provide the link below. But uh, Desiree and I ended up coming down here to the El Capitan about a week ago, and we actually saw a movie for the first time in a year since the 2020 lockdown. But the, the biggest request I got was for more of a close-up look inside of these theaters. You know, I honestly tried to get down here earlier today. Hollywood comes alive fast. But I'm gonna round the corner here at uh, Hollywood and Orange in a moment. Now the El Capitan is right across the street here from the Chinese theater, which was Brownman's third movie palace, the first being the Egyptian theater, further down Hollywood Boulevard here. But there's a very interesting connection between the El Capitan and the Chinese theater, which we'll get to in a minute here. Okay, now I wanna show you something kinda of cool that my friend Al showed me. If you come to the El Capitan and you stand right here in front of the box office, you can get a perfect shot of the Hollywood sign in the distance. Let me show you. Let me turn around and show you. So this is the view if you're standing in front of the box office and what you do is you get your camera all lined up right there and look, it even looks like a little film strip, doesn't it? And look, look what's right there in the middle. So we're gonna go across the street. I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about the El Capitan. It's a beautiful building. My obligatory T-Rex shot. There's an even better view of that uh, Hollywood sign from up here on the second or third floor of the plaza across the street. Would you believe I've never been in here before? This structure was a recreation from D.W. Griffith's Intolerance, and I'm told that the actual structure was bigger. Well, I'll tell you what, you get up high like this, and it's really, really pretty impressive. Watch this as we come around the corner. You can see the beautiful details here on this building. I'm going to turn around for you in just a second, but I want you to just see what I see here. And here we can really get a good eyeful of the gorgeous El Capitan. Sid Grauman's second theater, it was part of a big push to build a lot of buildings down here on Hollywood Boulevard. Ooh, this is really high. This is really high. That tower doesn't look so high from up here. Okay, we have to give credit to some of these, these architects. Octavius Morgan, J.A. Walls, Styles O. Clements. These are great names. They did the exterior of the building, the ticket lobby, and the department store portion of the building. A large 
office building fronts the theater on Hollywood Boulevard, and it was designed in the Spanish Baroque style by architects and features, can I say it, chirigueresque details and has characters from literature and drama carved into its upper stories, including Shakespeare characters. This part of the building originally contained Barker Brothers Furniture Department store on the first and second floors with offices above. These second floor retail display windows are unique, also framed in ornamental cast iron. These displays were meant to be easily viewed from across the street, where, where I am, and they match the windows below. But let's take a moment to uh, recognize this guy, C.B. E. Toberman. And I quote, Charles Edward Toberman, the whirlwind developer often referred to as the father of Hollywood, master of the Hollywood Lodge in 1914. Toberman was not only responsible for enticing Sid Grauman into Hollywood to create the Egyptian, Chinese, and El Capitan theaters, but also for construction of the Hollywood Roosevelt, the Hollywood Old, the Pantages Theater, and the Max Factor Building. I'm trying to get a close-up of some of these uh, literary characters here. Do you recognize any of these? Let me know. Leave, leave your comments below. Ticket lobby, they call it, uh, has beautiful, I, I guess it's stucco. I thought it was concrete and I, I guess essentially that's what it is, but beautiful stucco um, details and they've been uh, painted, I believe, to the original look from the, the 20s and 30s by Disney during their restoration. The theater opened May 3rd, 1926 with a stage show called Charlotte's Review of 1926, starring uh, Gertrude Lawrence, uh, Beatrice Lilly, uh, you're not going to know these names, but... Now this, uh, this used to be the showroom for the furniture store, but it's a sweet little malt shop now. I came here back in the day with some of my students. We were late to the bus. It's interesting to note that Morgan Walls and Clements did many other local theater projects, including uh, the Mayan Theater, which uh, actually I got to see the inside of the Mayan Theater when I was in high school. I was in a slaughter video. And of course, <laughs> uh, uh, the whole team would team up again with Landsberg uh, on the Wiltern Theater downtown. In 1937, they equipped the theater to screen movies, and in 1941, the first actual premiere was Citizen Kane, Orson Welles' Citizen Kane. Hollywood Boulevard came alive that night for the independent film, which was blacklisted by William Randolph Hearst. Well, Desiree, are you ready to go inside? Let's take a look, let's take a look. G. Albert Landsberg did the theater. Much of the decorative work was by John E. Smaraldi, who chose an opulent East Indian revival style. 1926 was a busy year for Landsberg. 
as in addition to the El Capitan, he also designed the present Orpheum Theater downtown and the Shrine Auditorium. After it was closed in 1989, Disney and the Pacific Theater Group bought it, and there were plans to split it into a twin theater with two 500-seat auditoriums in Art Deco style, because it was assumed that the original Landsberg interior decorations had been 80% destroyed by the 1942 remodeling. But as work began on the conversion, workmen and the theater owners were amazed at what they found behind the false walls and decided to go for a museum standard restoration, which cost $6 million. Financed, again, by the Walt Disney Organization and Pacific Theaters. Theater artistic designer Joseph Musel was chosen to restore and replace the architectural details of the theater. guys, how are you? Great, how are you? I'm excellent. I haven't been inside in too long. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's really beautiful what they've done here. Disney eventually took over 1988. It's all painted. Was it always painted like this? So they recreated a lot of it, and of course Disney. And what a beautiful thing they did, I think, by restoring it and continuing to keep it alive. That was Joey we were talking to. It is now common for an experience at the El Capitan to include a stage show. And just watching the curtains open is amazing. What? Who's going? <laughs> I think I'm pissing it. We just came out to have a good time, Desiree. <laughs> so yeah, Desiree and I had a lot of fun during that visit to see the inside of the theater first time in a long time but here I am back outside I'm across the street look at this look at this I'm almost as, as, as tall as the Chinese theater now remember I told you there was a connection between the Chinese and the El Capitan well, the connection is actually here in the Masonic Lodge, which was built before the El Capitan. Oh, in 1922, the Hollywood Lodge of uh, the Masons relocated their existing lodge, which was actually right over here where I am, across the street to this new three-story building. The construction was paid for by Charles Hoberman. You should recognize his name. Now, I'm not gonna make this a, a Masonic conspiracy video. All I wanna bring up is that apparently there used to be a tunnel that led from the Chinese theater across Hollywood Boulevard here to the Masonic Lodge. And it was used by movie stars at premieres who wanted to escape. Now apparently the entrance to the tunnel exists on both ends. I've never seen it. I don't know, maybe they've been boarded up. The tunnel itself was most likely destroyed during construction of the Red Line. The uh, Los Angeles uh, subway metro system.
those guys. And I think that brings us full circle. I hope you enjoyed today's visit to the El Capitan, and I encourage you to visit the next time you are in Hollywood. So let's wrap up with a few of the El Capitan's greatest moments, highlighting the many movies that have been showcased here throughout the years. Until next time. Bye for now. Wait, okay, look at this thing. Look at that. Desiree got a... What is it, kids? Can you tell what it is? Can't you tell? It's like a really sad teddy bear. It's really... <laughs>